What is mind except being the greatest challenge for our understanding? When I looked into different definitions, something consistently came across, which is learning and memory. And actually, the very word mind apparently comes from Old English gmint, signifying memory. So already our ancestors understood that learning and memory are our minds, ourselves. And when we started over 30 years ago, our quest to understand the mind, to, to find a window from the brain to mind, we started with learning and memory also because learning and memory can be experimentally studied in such animals as mice or rats. Imagine a big cage in which there is a dozen of mice living, living happily together with food and shelter. But however, in order to drink, they have to go to the corners where are the bottles. They have to make a, small, a no spoke through a small gate and then they access the bottles and they drink. And then imagine that in one of the corners, we introduce sweet water. Mice like us, they really prefer sweets. So then they have to remember two things. They have to remember that there is a sweet water in the corner and where the corner is located. And now looking for the preference toward this corner versus the other three, we can actually measure the strengths of the memory. Then we decided so to use uh, molecular biology to approach the question of brain-mind connection. Molecular biology because it offers the greatest toolbox to answer biological questions. Molecular biology has been mostly about gene structure and function. And, you know, in all our cells we have the same genes, but the cells differ between themselves. They can produce hair, they are in the liver, they are in the brain. This is because they have different sets of proteins, somewhat overlapping, but nevertheless not identical. And proteins are encoded by genes. So we looked whether during learning, where there are some reorganization of the brain, in the brain cure, could it be that there are changes in gene activity? And we discovered the first such gene, gene expression in learning, the gene that was induced upon learning episode in kind of those tests. And this turned out Whose name, his name is CFOS. And then it turned out that CFOS is like conductor in the gene orchestra. It regulates the other genes. So then we followed and discovered that CFOS may regulate a gene coding for protein known as matrix metalloproteinase 9, MMP9 for short. And then we actually uh, indeed found out that Missing this protein, there's over 20,000 genes in every cell, in humans or mice, but missing only this one resulted in the impaired learning, like the sweet water uh, corner learning. And then we followed and tried to look what is the real uh, meaning of this. And, you know, you have to imagine brain. In humans, there's like 86 billion of nerve cells, neurons in the brain. In mice, about 70 million. And those cells are connected to each other. They could be connected to each nerve cells with hundreds or thousands of the other cells. So it's a vast network. And the brain operates like the signal goes through different neurons. You know from the schools that it's electrical when it goes through a neuron, but jumping from one to another at the neuron to neuron junction, there's a chemical has to be released, so-called neurotransmitter. And this chemical can either excite, activate the other neurons or not. This depends how much of the receptors for the signals are available. And what we found that our MMP9 controls how much of the receptors is on, on those junctions called synapses. Uh, so, uh, having just opening a window from brain to mind, we then ask the question, because some people may argue, okay, mind is a specific human feature. There are some definitions like this. I would argue if the animal has, a has memory, has also a mind, but okay. So now we turn to humans and their minds. How we can study the mind of human, especially a single molecule? We go to the diseased mind, to mental disorder how we can study specific molecule. We can use the experiments done by nature. Uh, we have those genes, and we have more or less the same genes. Some genes are in bad shape, they are called mutated, big changes. But the genes anyway come in different flavors, and those are called polymorphic variants, gene polymorphisms. 
And there are MMP9 comes also in those variants, some of them modulating how much of this MMP9 we have in our cells being produced. And together with colleagues from Szczecin, group of Professor Jurek Samochowiec, psychiatrists, we study one of those polymorphies in regular people versus alcoholic family and found that the variant that predisposes to, pro to produce more of MMP9 was far more frequent, twice more frequent, in the alcoholics. Then we went back to our uh, IntelliCage, this cage, when we studied the animal, and uh, Kasia Radwańska in the lab developed a special system to study alcohol addiction. So now one of the corner contains alcohol. It's not a vodka, it's like wine, 10% alcohol or something. And again, mice like humans, some get addicted. And then we can study how much they're addicted, how we can do it. We mentioned this nose spoke here. And let's imagine that this one nose spoke opens the gate. Two, four, eight, 16, 32. How much you have to be motivated doing those nose spokes to get access to the bottle? When mice miss MMP9, they are far less motivated. And then the addicted mice, they have changes in those synapses, these connections that are MMP9 dependent in the part of the brain called central amygdala. When we replenish MMP9 in, in otherwise missing this gene and protein entirely, we reintroduce the motivation. Probably the most uh, uh, symbolic mental disorder is schizophrenia. And, uh, Together with uh, our colleague from Germany, from Max Planck in Göttingen, Hanne Lorechtenreich, we studied gene polymorphies in schizophrenic patients. And she and her group discovered that there's another polymorphism, which we knew nothing about that, that predisposes to more or less delusions. And then Kasia Wepeta, a student in the lab, elaborated on this, and actually she found out that this polymorphism results in less or more of MP9 release produced at those synaptic junctions. This control those synapses. So this was also very important here. And uh, so I wanted to persuade you that this is uh, both in the physiology of the brain as well as in the pathology of the brain in mental disorders, there's a molecules involved that act on specific neuron-to-neuron -neuron junction, allowing reorganization of the vast network. Dozens of billions of cells, dozens of trillions of connections. What is then in for you from that what I am saying? One is knowledge. Knowledge is great. You should be happy just knowing more things. No? But I don't need to tell you this. You came to the Sanctuary of Knowledge, Copernicus Science Center, exactly for that. Secondly, if we identify a specific protein, a specific molecule, to be a culprit in mental disorders, we may address, we may target this protein therapeutically. We may develop drugs for those disorders. Think about it. How much world would be better if you cure all the delusions? And there is something else in this. Our results point to those synapses, to specific molecules in both healthy and diseased mind. But there are many other groups that also obtain similar results pointing to those synapses and this connection between neurons and the modification of the strengths of the connections as pivotal for the brain function, both in health and disease. So there's a consensus emerging about this. Changes in this connectivity is important for our minds. So it's becoming rather quantitative than qualitative issue. It's just a matter of time that we'll be able to, to observe, to image our network of neurons and the brain and their activity. And what next? Next, it might be reproduced into some inorganic material contained into small box. Maybe you print on your home 3D printer. And this way, you produce your mind immortal that will be running your avatar. Also immortal. I guess I, I am too, low, uh, too old to, ex, uh, to experience this, 
But for the youngsters in the audience, beware. Thank you very much.